I remember getting my Genesis in the summer of 1990 and enjoying all the excellent games that were out for it. It seemed like Sega had all the bases covered. You had platformers, action games, shooters, sports titles, even RPGs, which weren't as popular back then. Man, the Genesis was just firing on all cylinders. However, there was one genre that seemed kind of underrepresented to me. I love running guns. While Rambo 3 was a good game for its time, it just didn't hold a candle to the Contra goodness that NES owners had been enjoying for years. I wanted to blast through waves of generic enemies with a friend. I wanted to weld obscene weapons that the Geneva Convention would never allow. I wanted to fight off an alien invasion without a shirt. Sadly, the Genesis just didn't have that. Well, it didn't have it at launch. It would take about a year for such a game to blast its way onto the console. That game that finally gave Genesis owners a taste of the frantic running gun action they so wanted was Data East's Midnight Resistance. And while it wasn't exactly Konami-like in execution, it was one hell of a try. Midnight Resistance exploded onto the Genesis from arcades in 1990, and when it arrived at our local video store, which is where we bought and rented our games, it came to us as a complete surprise. No stores or arcade near us had the coin up, so we didn't know that it was a port. To us, this was our first contact with the game, and all we knew was that there was this faceless, muscle-bound hero with unlimited ammo who was tearing up everything around him. It was loud, it was violent, and it had big explosions. We liked it instantly. We were ecstatic to finally have another running gun title to play, especially when we discovered that it had been in the arcades first. Hell, even Robocop knew before we did. This was the kind of action we were waiting for. The opening cutscenes were kind of creepy and made little sense, but you're just supposed to click past those anyway. The actual game opens in great fashion with some blonde girl driving a jeep right into battle while you stand on the hood and blast away enemy soldiers. <laughs> How 80s is that? And that music! Just try hearing this and tell me that you don't want to go out and take on the world. There are nine levels in Midnight Resistance, each broken down into smaller areas. Like Contra, they can scroll in all directions, meaning that this isn't just an exercise in learning to shoot to the right while running. Levels change directions multiple times, and enemies attack constantly. Through cities, forests, mountains, and in enemy bases, you're going to kill everything that moves. Luckily, there are plenty of weapons for doing just that. Red soldiers drop keys which you use to unlock weapons after each stage. Each weapon costs a particular amount of keys, and there are upgrades to your standard rifle as well as a backpack weapon that adds extra firepower. You can use your keys to mix and match rifle and backpack combinations or just even buy extra bullets. You drop the keys when you die, so your first order of business should be to pick up all the ones you drop so that you can upgrade when you finish the stage. The control is simple enough, and thankfully Data East made a smart choice when it ported the game. The arcade machine uses a rotating joystick like I Carry Warriors, and to compensate for this on the Genesis, the developers included four different control options that let you alternate between strafing in a single direction and firing eight different ways. All you need to do is hold down the corresponding button and you can alternate your firing however you choose. Oh hey, did I mention that this game has a story? No? Well trust me, once you hear it, you'll know why I forgot about it. You play Johnny Ford an agent for the narcotics control agency who spends his days breaking up South American drug cartels. You know, typical stuff. Your dad's a famous scientist, and he's discovered a way to cure people of their drug addictions. Naturally, a powerful drug lord named the Crimson King isn't too happy with your family's anti-drug efforts, so he kidnaps all of them and dares you to attempt a rescue. You, of course, tie a ribbon around your head, oil yourself up, and head out to save your loved ones, Rambo style. So, you've got some great Contra style action, large sprites, a rocking soundtrack, all of the ingredients of a winning formula. Unfortunately, there are some battle scars that show here. The graphics are clean and large, but there's very little detail in them. Also, the animation's pretty sparse. I mean, the visuals get the job done, but there's nothing really memorable about them. The sound has the same problem. While the soundtrack is great, there's really little variety in it. 
The same few tracks play over and over, and they wear pretty thin very quickly. Even worse, the music drowns out the sound effects, making all this running and gunning sound pretty subdued. I mean, I love the soundtrack in this game, I really do. But it's not very varied, I mean, it's just the same four tracks, and it sounds great, but it just gets tiring, you know? In the overall scheme of things, these faults don't ruin Midnight Resistance, as you'll most likely be too busy trying to stay alive to really be bothered by them. Not that the game's very hard, because it's not. But the most heartbreaking part has to be the end, where you can only save as many family members as you have keys. If you don't get all six keys on the last level, someone's gonna get left behind. I vote Grandma and Grandpa. Or would you rather leave your kids? You know what? Just get all six keys and avoid any kind of controversy. I have to say that I really do like Midnight Resistance despite its flaws. It scratched the itch it was meant to scratch, and it's still fun all these years later. Genesis gamers were given all the run and gun quality they could ever want with Gunstar Heroes, Contra Hardcore, and the Mega Turrican, but Midnight Resistance was first. Fans of shooting things should give it a chance and see if it grows on them. The Genesis will thank them for it.